Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We got Christmas Abbott on the show today. Hi, Christmas. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fucking well. <laughs> I'm really well. Every time you're on the show, I feel like a better person. I don't know how I do that. You're positive. You're there's, uplifting. And the denim. Probably there's a lot of denim. A lot of denim. Dude, denim I just want to say I'm rocking the Justin Timberlake and Tennessee tuxedo and Canadian uh, Britney tuxedo. Spears outfit from like, I think it was 96. <laughs> yeah. You guys remember that? Yeah, when they were together. I feel so much like they are in this outfit. I had the dark denim, the light denim. Mm. Uh, Before I, she shaved her head. Oh, that yeah. That was 2007. Yeah, yeah. That was pre-shave of the head just for the audience yeah. at home. Because that's when it all went downhill for her. I'm, I'm vibing on my jacket today. It's nice. Thanks. It's real nice. It's feeling real Southern today. Um, we're going to start off with a bang because we did, we did last episode. And okay. uh, we went hard in the paint immediately. By the episode paint. episode exploded. You hard in the her pink? butthole. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right around the... Uh, <laughs> Talked about hashtag prolapse, which is still going on on your Instagram. I still get the hashtag at Christmas prolapse. Abbots. Yes. It makes me smile. <laughs> well, here's, here's here's the thing with the drinking bros: we're able to uh, affect national policy. Yeah, like we got Richard Stasekall added to the National Defense Authorization Act, but we also troll all of our friends using that power. So, yeah, like it's nice to do both. It's pretty impressive that you guys. I mean, this. This started with JT a while ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Your uh, first episode, because he was in love with you, still is, by the way. <laughs> um, we understand. <laughs> he's not on the show today. Dan and I understand why you're not even remotely entertaining J- dating JT. We talked about this in every episode. Yes. I've actually. Yes. <laughs> so we're all done with it. I'm I, not going to ask again. I was going to wait a little further into the episode to bring this up, but I actually have a letter from JT to you. <laughs> is that real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> he didn't spell is your this fu- a, a dear christmas letter is it really S- sort of yeah did he, he break up with me via a letter no 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 and he also <laughs> didn't spell your name right <laughs> oh. read aloud what oh you want to you want to do it now because I, I have to go through the whole thing so it's like um, well co- i'll tell you what cock tease wait. it now and we'll we'll yeah. circle back to okay, it okay because we had to start off in, with a bang yeah. we are yeah well, this bang, is jesus christ is like i was not expecting a, a letter from jared well i didn't bang him you have not okay. banged him you've not <laughs> yeah, slept with yeah, him so well not yet we'll see what happens after this letter, letter. Uh, i don't think that's it's it's ever gonna go down you're too classy christmas <laughs> you know i can't see jt just fucking grumping up on you after a foot long from subway tuna with extra onions just he being on top dogs. of you yeah i can't see you being down for that where you're just like where he's getting double fisted by hot dogs yeah what happened to lady hot dog Lady Lord Hot Dog. Uh, same thing that happens to all of them. You know? Yeah. Six weeks and then they're out the door. <laughs> Good Goodbye, Irene. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over. But I can't see you being cool with like, hey, man, you just finished with a hard workout, probably a steam, got in the shower, and then Jerry just finished a foot long, and then he wants to climb on top of you and do mish because um, he's tired. You know? Mish? Yeah. Missionary? Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we use abreves here. <laughs> Bingo! Um, I can't see you being cool with like, yeah. I just fucking worked on my abs today. Go ahead and fire away. Just roll roll around on top of me. <laughs> We're I don't even know how this got so deep so fast. <laughs> well, because you wouldn't, right? Like that's, you wouldn't, uh, Jared. That's what she said. Are you yeah. asking for JT specifically, or like what my personal no, preference Jared. is after? No, no, no. Um, I'm not asking sexually what you're into. But <laughs> okay. That would be a little too forward. Now let's talk about is that. It? I mean, last time we talked about her fucking prolapsed butthole for half an hour. It's true. Yeah. How much worse could it get? I can see you being dominant just because of what you do. No, like you got you, a man. That's the wrong way, though. Is it really? Women who are dominant in real life and have that responsibility don't want to pick out where they're going to eat at night, and they want to be dominated in the bedroom. Typically, that is true. Answer the question, Christmas. What question do I answer? <laughs> you want to oh be dominated? God. Like, do you want to? Like, do you want to go okay, home so and be I'm like, "Hey, piggyback"? So I do. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh. It's just a question, Christmas. It's getting real early. There. Uh, wow, I'm. I'm tangled right now. I don't. I don't come unraveled. I'm a little unraveled. Okay, so I am a very like I have a very masculine energy in the work that I do, and my work is my life. Right? It's very intense. 
you know, you guys know self self employed, self made, self like your your own brand, all the things. You are you are responsible for so much more than just, hey, I'm gonna get on Instagram and post this cool picture today. Sure. So that's a masculine energy thing. And so most of my life is masculine energy. So got most guys love like the the idea of like this boss girl that whatever. Until they realize that like I don't wanna be the boss at home either. Like yeah. he's he's right. He's spot on. Like I like to be super girly, super feminine, and that's what a lot of the world doesn't see. They see this badass Christmas that like just bulldozes. We talked about bulldozing today. Like bulldozes to get what she wants. Like really relentless. Like no no boundaries in the sense of like I I just go for my target. Like I get it done. I have and that's from working with special forces guys mm. in Iraq and like really finding my self worth. It was like. It was intense. And so I really picked up that type of energy. So when I go home, no, I don't want to continue to be the boss at home. I don't want this feminine dude that, you know, when I say feminine dude, I don't mean like feminine. Like I just want somebody that can make the decisions, mm -hmm. take charge, and. You, you like to get choked. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dan and I have just <laughs> guessed your entire life huh? and you're stunned by it right now. I don't know if I'm so. I mean, I don't just. I don't think I've actually talked about my sexual adventures um, publicly. We, look, we don't need to here. Um, <laughs> a guess is a guess. Your laughter was all we needed to say that I, we were correct. If it was a hard no, you'd be like, "No, dude." I don't like to be the boss <laughs> yes, there. Exactly. Right. There's you know. Wrong with so, it. like, I like to be very feminine in that um, area in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There we go. I love. Uh, how uncomfortable you are! Right I know. Now. I know. I feel like I'm like sweating in my armpits, and I want to smell them right now. Like Molly and, like, Shannon, it's right? Dan's, off a tree. I don't it's know. Dan's it's greatest. Strange. That's that's all he it's lives like for. This is to be uncomfortable. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna make it even that's more un uncomfortable. That's uncommon. I'm gonna that's make it even more uncomfortable. Okay. I heard a rumor about you. That just one. Let's do it. Well, this one's a weird one, and you can tell me if it's <laughs> well, true. Or I if got it's some false. weird things. I heard your most because you you you're a massive social media following. It's awesome. I've been following you I'm for years. I'm gonna drink this a lot faster we, than I anticipated. We worked that thing in Vegas. I've been following you for years. I heard a rumor that the most popular pictures you post are of your feet because people have a foot fetish specifically towards you. Is this rumor from earlier when we were chatting? No, this was before we got in. And somebody, oh, really? somebody asked, like, hey, does she do it on purpose? And I was like, like Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino. I was like, mm. I don't know. Maybe that's part of the, the thing, but I'll ask her. Um, so do I post pictures that include my feet <laughs> for my foot fetish fan following? Yes. Look at that. That's a <laughs> that was <laughs> five apps in a row. Uh, I don't do it intentionally, but I know that there's a large following that love my feet. Thank you. Oh, look at that. <laughs> You just winked at the camera, too. So I I think I have beautiful feet. And um, so there's Footopedia. Foot hubris. There's, yeah. There's a couple websites that I have a five-star rating. And whoa, like whoa, eight, whoa, and, whoa. Oh, Pull it up on your phone. It's like, yeah. it's like hot or not, but for feet. Yeah, it's Is hot it or really? not. Yeah, yeah, it's like foot, Footopedia. Foot. I've um, never just, heard of um, this. It's Google like, Christmas habit. Okay. Foot. And then some some of the websites will come up. I have a I have a five star rating. I'm very happy. About Congratulations! That. It's like as, it's like as important as your Uber when you're a, <laughs> when you're a public figure and you um you know if you have because you can't change like you can't <clears throat> do surgery on your feet and make them prettier. There's oh my god! There's a million photos of your feet on here. This yeah. is so fucking and insane. I guarantee you, if I posted Wiki a feet. picture, wicked feet. If I posted a picture this week, it would pop up within a day. It's pretty, man. it's pretty interesting. So I get requests I'm, I'm, all the time for pictures of my feet. They want to pay for pictures of my feet. And I dated a guy that was uh, had a foot fetish. Oh, which was, there it is. That Did, was nice. There it is. Yeah. So yeah. you enjoy that. Well, do I enjoy somebody worshiping my feet and rubbing them every night? And yeah, I do enjoy it. Yeah. Occasionally, sometimes when I was tired, he just used my feet. Ah. <laughs> You know, sometimes. that's sweet. Mama needed a break. Yeah, no, I, I understand it. So I'm looking at it right right here on, on WikiFeet. You can answer these questions. Nope. Is your shoe he size a no. six and a half US? Uh, seven and a half. Oh, so somebody's whoever is running the WikiFeet. But I have very well proportioned feet. So they look six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Was it like an optical illusion? Or <laughs> I mean, some people have like really, I have, you know, 
They just got like busted toes, mm. bunions. So I'm looking fat at. Feet, I'm looking at. So toes. it also has the amount of views that just your feet get on here. Um, yeah. Your top ranked photo is holy fuck. That's a lot of views. Four million eight hundred fifteen. How do I monetize this? Five hundred eighty-three. Um, you were on a beach and your feet are stretched out, so you can you can see your abs as well as your feet. Was that like Sunday? <laughs> um, so the, the next one that, that, that has the, same. the next one is four million eight hundred twelve thousand. So about three thousand. I want to look at under, the picture. And it says enjoying a day off, and it's you at the beach with your feet. Do you know how long Those ago that was? Two photos were from Sunday. Uh, so you say in the mic. Say in the mic. Four days ago. Four. So four, that was four days ago. Four days ago. Four days ago. That's four million views of just your feet picture. I, I in think four I need days. to figure out how to restructure. Well, that's what we're here work. for. Um, oh wow, this one. I don't even have four million followers on Instagram. Go follow my Instagram. There's a lot more feet on there. Man, well, so you should that was keep little, adding. Yeah. You should more keep feet. adding now that you know what it is. Um, <laughs> now there's just pictures of you with your feet stretched out. Do you remember taking these? With my feet stretched out. Yeah. So it's just it's strictly your feet, and it says. It's still busted, but it's my foot, and it works pretty damn well. Okay, that was about two years ago. Um, I can give you a chronicle of my life and foot talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's, that's four million views. That was about two years ago after I broke my foot and after I had a couple surgeries. Got it. Oh, you know what's weird? So just under that is the one with your scars. So you have fresh scars here. Uh-huh. That's that a was... surprising one that people would be into that. You know... I, I don't I don't I don't have my judgment pants on. Yeah. So um, I'm going to I'm going to take this a step further. There's somebody I used to date who used to get messages on social media of like, "Hey, I will pay 40 to 50 dollars for used socks." And apparently there's a a huge thing online where you can sell used socks, dirty socks, um and then you write a description of what you did in the socks that day. <laughs> And then you mail the socks off in a Ziploc bag. This is totally true. I've heard this with like panties. Yeah. Yeah. But not for socks. socks. But it makes sense. Yep. Why not? So I'm just saying if you really wanted to monetize it, you could probably <laughs> go through the fucking roof with this. I mean, if they're going to take my pictures of my feet anyway, then just, you know, PayPal me something. <laughs> yeah. I, cause there's another one where it looks like somebody's just measuring it on a board. Um there's a, you have a lot of feet photos, and then a lot of them from Big Brother. <laughs> so people are like free fra framing photos and things like that. Oh, because of the break? Of just your feet. Yeah. So, well, it's, um, there's several pages. I, it's, it's never <laughs> end. Like, I, I physically can't get to the end of these on this, and it is millions. I, I'm just, no Isn't lie. Isn't it bizarre? Yeah, and, and no lie. Just, just from the numbers on here, I would say. You're easily over two hundred, two to three hundred million views of just your feet photo. Um, that is a fucking <clears throat> lot. As fetishes go, that's one of the. Uh, it's one of the e highest. It's I've one ever of the. Seen. It's probably more popular because it's easy. Like you see feet all the time, you know. And the, and yeah, the last I'll, so. I'll bring up of it is, is <laughs> this this page is. It's 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 listing a hundred photos. It says there is four hundred and seventy photos of just your feet alone. On wiki feet. Mm. Might want to look at a new profession. <laughs> you can make a lot of money monetizing those feet, <laughs> yeah. Christmas. Um, man, that's crazy. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> so for you, so my you feet. did know about this? I did know about that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I get. Yeah, she, she is the one that the she's the one that told me about it. And I'm like, well, that's a weird thing to be bragging about. I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, but you know. It is. If, if it makes you feel confident and powerful then you know whatever it's a strange thing i love my feet so the fact that other people love my feet it's kind of cool that's sweet yeah you gotta embrace it <laughs> yeah you gotta embrace I your foot appreciate fetish that. yeah yeah because that's a big thing in the world yeah look yeah. there's a lot of porn videos with with foot fetish videos Tons. yeah yeah it's it's a bit much all mine are pg yeah well, well for, na for now for now <laughs> christmas you know We'll see what happens. If you're, in the if you're trying to pay for a private school later on down the road, I'm going to squish it in some watermelon or you something. You have to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> stomp the stomped waffles. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot of it that goes on. Jeez. <laughs> I think How we've embarrassed you here? enough right off the top that now we can just ask you some normal questions. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm cool. I'm not hot and sweaty anymore. And just ease into the day. <laughs> when when is this going to air? Uh, next Wednesday. Um, are you still like? Uh, 
you indulged us with the natty seltzers here. Yeah. So that was your first ever. Yeah. Is that your first seltzer? No. Okay. What no, do you think I, of these? These are surprisingly better than I mean, I thought it was just gonna be natty light. I don't I don't know what I thought. I'm, but a, it's fan, good. I'm a fan of these, yeah. I like these. Yeah, yeah. I could these are good day drinking. What's the alcohol? Is it weird drinking at noon on a Wednesday? No. Well you guys are both white trash, <laughs> so it's like it would make sense that natural light would appeal to you. Yeah, are you white trash too? What's your I what's love, your background? She's from North Carolina, dude. No, I'm from Virginia. Or Virginia, yeah, yeah. She's total white Parents trash. Poor or what what was the oh, yeah. sitch? Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, so you're, yeah. you're white trash. We're all pretty much from the it's same crazy. background, it's just cool. South yeah. Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia. We're all white trash. So rid- riddle me this. Um, would you ever, because I, I watched The Bachelor with my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, pro tip for you men at home, help, helps get you laid. Um, you watch The Bachelor at all? No. They were just in Virginia. Oh. Yeah, Virginia Beach. Oh. Now, I have not been to that area, um, but uh, there was a homewrecker that was running through the town fucking up. Man, those fucking home wreckers. Relationships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't need to tell you about it. Don't um, need to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> TMZ can tell you about it if you want to find out about Christmas Sabbath and home wreckers. Greatest story of all time. Lips we, are sealed. Yeah, exactly. Lips are sealed. Exactly. Which we talked about in the last episode. But while I was watching it, I was looking at these girls and, and everything in their background um, and the white trashiness element and how they All the changed. daddy issues. Yeah. You got that too? I don't even have to watch the show and know that all those girls have daddy issues. <laughs> so all I kept thinking was, because I knew we knew you were coming in, and I was like, would you ever do that? Would you ever be the bachelorette? Like, typically it's a bunch of fucking dum-dums on there. Like, and have you ever been asked to do shit like that? Um, Nothing like that. So ironically, I was laughing at the other day. We, me and my friend were having a conversation. I was like, what if we just did a show that was like, you know, kind of like the bachelorette, but it's Merry Christmas. Uh-huh. I like Merry it. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are you yeah. getting it? M-A-R-R-Y. <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. Are you like, you're not laughing. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> Dan's leaving right I'm now, leaving. but uh, yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. Uh, I'm not I a, love a good pun. I don't like Dan puns. puns. I think puns I are just the worst. I like puns. I but like them. It's too. hard to avoid it with a name like Christmas. I know. Christmas. So I lean into it. I embrace it. Yeah. I, I say the obvious before somebody else can. Um, yeah. You know, uh, there's a lot. There's like mixed feelings. I don't know. It depends on like the goal of it. It depends on a lot of things. Okay. I think that if I did something like that, I would I would really lean into it and just like psych- psychologically warfare these dudes. Really? Oh yeah. Cause like really, are they gonna? Are they being super authentic? Are they real? Like it's it's dating with an agenda, and their agenda is to be famous, and so like. It's it's fifty fifty, and like since you've done reality TV before, right? Oh, it's so it's so polished. It's so you know the way production. You know, they you can manipulate a lot of the situations. So, mm. I mean, I'd go in and I, and I would embrace like I would be me, but much bigger and exaggerated. Yeah, and I'd probably put them through some psychological warfare. So, having watched shit like that, can you find a real relationship on something like that? I don't know. Uh, I think so. So there's different situations like the bachelor. I'm not real familiar with, but I know in big brother, they literally cast people that are made to, um, like push away from each other Mm -hmm. or come together. So like big brother has actually produced a lot of marriages, like long lasting, legitimate, very, very like bound relationships. So it's one personality to the situation and three, the pressure, uh, so you have like this perfect mix for people to come together and stay together. So I I found that really fascinating. They didn't put somebody on there for me, but that's okay, Big Brother. Next time, yeah. Um, but I, what do you I'm mean also, for you? Like somebody that? Well, like they literally like people have come off the show and gotten married. Mm-hmm. Like people have gotten engaged on the show, not because it's not a dating show. Yeah, it's yeah. just like this high pressure cooker, right? Yeah. Uh, so they they intend for certain personalities to come together and other personalities to um like uh, repel uh-huh. and then there's a whole big mix in there and i mean you it's a pretty in- intense situation but I, I find it fascinating that they have actually crafted this system yeah. that they can really identify these personalities mm-hmm. and put them together and literally people are coming out getting engaged immediately and getting married right away and lasting well, I look at it like this. So in, in the case of Big Brother, when you're stuck with people for 24 hours a day under those conditions, 
as opposed to the dating world, you don't get to see the bad side of people or the non makeup or sharing the same bathrooms or all of that shit until later on in a relationship. Much later. And that's when turn offs start to happen and you start to not like the other person because you're actually seeing their true colors and who they really are. Whereas Big Brother, boom, you're in there and the next day you're shitting in front of somebody and uh, you're using the bathroom, showering, all the shit you Crying. don't want people to see. Yeah. You're doing that within 24 hours and mm -hmm. then. On top of it, you're continuing that for how many months? How many months were you on there? 92 days. Holy fuck. That's why. And then you're in, you know, you're in sequester beforehand. So I was, I was in isolation, you know, some sort of isolation like that for a hundred days. So, so think, like, think about it from that way. If, if you oh, date, if you went on a hundred dates with somebody, you'd probably end up marrying them. Now you're just fast forwarding the process and mm -hmm. speeding it up. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, crazy. It's, it's incredible. Um, the need and the codependency that 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 experience produced mm -hmm. for me so like i like when i came out i went into isolation i stayed on my back porch i i didn't talk to anybody if i couldn't facetime you or have a conversation with you i i, I was like nope i mean it it completely pulled me away from the whole world but at the same time like i needed to be connected uh in, in a very unhealthy way to somebody okay um, which is bizarre when you, especially when you come out and you don't have that person to connect with. Yeah. So you like, connect with anybody there? Um, yeah, I have some, like, I, it's kind of, I mean, it's very much like boot camp where you, you go through and you have this very shared experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and some people connected in a big way. I didn't like that. So when I came out and I was, I had just gone through a big breakup right before the show, didn't connect with anybody. Else. That's not why I went on the show either. Um, but you know, that part didn't happen. You come out and you're just like. It's just me in this world. Yeah. It, it starts to really uncover um, a lot of things that I had been kind of avoiding for a long time before then. Creepy. Personally, like on my own personal like journey. Yeah. Well, yeah. we may be able to help you out today. Yeah. So no. I have this beautiful letter from Jared um, oh, that wait, I'll be sharing Was that soon. the big bang that we wanted to start with or did you have something else in mind? No, we were talking about your feet. We were talking about your feet. Oh, that was the big well, bang. Let's that get was to a the, big, that's a big one. Like, let's get to the sponsors first. And, and then the we'll fact talk that you're into you. it. I, I don't think you realize how many dudes listen to the show and be, will hit you up after this and be like, yo. Because they want to, like, I'm foot, not that damaged anymore. Oh, no, a foot, foot fetish, fetish okay. is a big thing. <laughs> I was like, I'm not yeah. damaged anymore. I'm, I'm, well, I am still, but at the same time, like, in a beautiful way. Yeah, they don't want the damaged way. bird. They want the foot fetish. <laughs> like, that now. outweighs like, the, listen, yeah. I'm going to, I'm also going to be. Stop trying to pre-read. I can't, I can't read that small. Okay. Sock it to me. <laughs> no, we, let's do the sponsors first and then I'm going to ruin your life. Okay. All right. Ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. Uh, look, 25% off mattresses, pillows, sheets, adjustable bases. You name it. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is giving it to you for 25% off. I don't know how they're making any fucking money. Um, I love them, and they've been a sponsor for I think they're robbing years. banks. Could be. Like, they're using the money from the from the mattresses to fund their heist, and that's all this is. Man, uh, if I it is, God bless them, because I'm sleeping in comfort, yeah. sleeping like a fucking king. That's the thing. It's like Rogan's gotten so big that he can say whatever he wants, and sponsors won't leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ghost Bed makes such a good bed that it doesn't matter if they're murdering people on the side. People still want to buy the beds. Yeah. So, Which I'm down with that. I mean, that's... Interesting approach yeah yeah i mean it is what i think they're just satiating their need to murder it's a coincidence it's not part of the business plan it just happens to be there but they work around it really nicely yeah i want to know nice so i know how old my mattress is but like people don't buy mattresses very often and they should like i like they should i think that your mattress should be changed out at least five years because like by 10 years you have an entire body in there from skin cells or it's an, pretty gross or another they well they have covers so they, they sell these covers that go over the mattresses which are nice and yeah, you're gonna but need still that like so much bodily fluid that i mean i have night sweats now it's pretty, you do oh yeah really i asked my doctor about pre-menopause you're young i'm you're not a young in lady. it but like yeah listen hormones are weird yeah yeah it's cool. So, Let's like, especially about, as you get older, you go through these bodily fluids more and more. Hey. Hey, if switch you're, it out. If get you're, a new yeah, mattress. Switch out your mattress. <laughs> go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. 25% um, off. And as always, that 36-month page you go program works with this. No interest. Knocks that shit down to like 20 bucks, which is fucking phenomenal. Uh, next up, we got vincerowatches.com. I'm wearing it today. Got the blue steel on today. Boom. 
Can we see the blue steel? Brings out my eyes, yeah. Buy the blue steel. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's nice. Um, I would say you rake it, but that's Chester's line. Uh, look, Vincero Watches we partnered up with. That's V-I-N-C-E-R-O watches.com. Promo code Drinking Bros, 15% off. Why did we partner up with them for the next few months? Simple. Everybody needs a nice watch. Occasionally, you're not a fucking dirt bag. And if you are, they make great watches for that as well. You've got the rubber one because you're disgusting. And, you're the rubber. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's like I'm used to wearing an Apple watch. Yes. So it's more comfortable for me. Like le- I sweat, so leather or something like that or metal will oxidize. It's not good. Yeah. And so, look, if you have an Apple Watch, on? swap not it out. Right now, no. Swap it out when you go out at night. Because whenever I see an Apple Watch, it just looks like a child's watch to me. Yeah. When you're out, you're just like, there's a little fucking tiny baby. I know, but around. it's kind of an expensive thing to just be like. Is it? I think. So here's the thing with these watches. And, and, and same with Apple Watches, right? It is the highest marked up item beside that and sunglasses where you're like, fuck off. These are affordable, nice, amazing, um, and it's just like, all right, sweet. You get fifteen percent off the promo code Dringer Bros and free shipping. You're not dropping four hundred on an Apple Watch that it's like. Man. I like seeing a, a a proper watch in the evening. Yeah, like yeah. daytime, I get it. You're running around, you're doing your thing. Yep. Um, proper like, watch in the evening. <laughs> Be a fucking gentleman. Yes, and you only need fucking one or two watches. Like that's it. These are affordable, um, and the quality is fucking unmatched. I mean, this thing, goddamn thing's heavy as shit. I love it. Yeah, if, uh, that other bicep is much larger. No, it's not. That's not true. I'm. Ja- I'm just. You're left. Naturally your left other bicep. bicep. Your left bicep. You think so? Because you're lifting all the weights we'll, with that watch. We'll what, what, what are you? <laughs> what are you doing? I, with I, you? I was like, let me spell were, this out for I you. I thought that you were indicating I was jacking off uh, an uncle and or a friend of mine. <laughs> So. That backfired. Cool. Uh, go, go to VinceroWatches.com uh, and get a watch today. Promo code Drinking Bros, 15% off and free shipping. Uh, last but not least, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Have you tried this yet? Uh, that specific? No. It's great. Um, big fan. As far as drinkables go, um, that's the best in the biz. Is it? Yeah, that's it right there. Best in the biz. Um, and you won't piss hot for anything. Anybody who's it's out there, look, 80% hot. of our uh, audience is a military and first responder, and they're like, hey, man, am I going to fucking test positive for this shit? No, you're not. There's no THC in it. And it's Kill Cliff. It's a brand you can trust. The flavors are amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, like 15 calories, no sugar, no yeah, carbs. Yeah, there was no sugar. And um, it's a Maz. It's a Maz. Yeah, 20 calories, and it's. So the promo code Drinking Bros, you get twenty uh, percent off a case and free shipping. Knocks it down to like three eighty a can. You can get a can of Monster, you can be an asshole, all jacked up on sugar, or you can get one of these and just chill out and go into the day. Also, works well with vodka. God damn it, there's nothing like a Sunday BBQ, a little Killcliff CBD and vodka. Go to KillcliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros, twenty percent off and free shipping. Um, let's get into that letter. I want to. I want to hear this letter from Jared. Well, I'm surprised a, he wrote a letter. There's a lot going on in this. I got to be honest. I'm not really sure. I believe this letter is from him. It's absolutely from him. This wasn't like one of your 1 a.m. projects. One of mine. Yeah. I would never do anything to help him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this is helping him. I thought this is sabotaging. It might help. <laughs> it's. I mean, I feel like either way it would be sabotage. Yeah. Him. But all right. Um, <clears throat> first, I have really no idea. First of all, I've never. He made a new letterhead for this. I've never seen this before. So he just made this. Really? Can and you? I tell you what. It, was it just Ibi, it are official? you in here? Who was that back there? That's my buddy Matt. Oh shit! What's up, man? Um, so is this just in a wide right now? In a wide angle? Can you see the screen? You see all of us in it. I <laughs> uh, see. So you see everyone in it. Great. Hey, Jamie. You wanna you wanna pop back in here? I want to put this this letter in here. I want to put it on the screen. He's taking photos of his feet. Yeah. He's, he, he wants those 4 million views. <laughs> Whose food? Mine. Oh. Um, Jared's got a letter. I want to pop this up on the screen here um, at the end of this. Yeah, here's so mark this time Here's code. what we're going to do. Yeah, mark the time code. We're gonna, I'm going to read the whole thing, and uh, I, want you to, I want you to have uh, a single on each of them in a box. And then the letter posted so people can read it. Because my reaction is going to be muted because I'm a sociopath, but you guys will actually react to this. Sure, sure. So that's what we want to see. You got all that? 
Tell me when no, you're No, re- repeat it you, again. Can you do me a favor and read it in what you perceive as JT's voice and like how no, he No, I can't. Be? I don't have that amount of energy. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. You ready? Yeah, let's hear it. He's ready. Okay. So first of all, it's uh, written in the format of a fucking military memorandum for record. You see that? <laughs> Idiot. Uh, so <laughs> in the two line, it says Christmas Abbott, and that's Abbott with one T, which is not how you spell that, by the way. Oh, so he misspelled her name right off yeah. the top. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that second T is silent in his defense. Got it? It is. So is the second B. Um, so the subject line says a serendipity ignored, which is a little bit <laughs> grandiose <laughs> for this situation. So dramatic. Is, is that... That's not proper English on that, that sentence, though. A serendipity ignored? I mean, a serendipitous occasion. Ser- that, that, that would have been, yeah. yeah so you, you want to go ahead and extend that. It's poetry. That, that it's verb. poetry. Yeah, yeah, you no, get a little fine. forgiveness. Fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and just the, generally the punctuation and spelling is not going to be great, so forgive me if I have to go back and reread something. No, no, I'm actually amped about it. So. Okay. Uh, my dearest Christmas, <laughs> period. <laughs> It's, gonna be a, it's supposed to be a no comma, comma there, Jared. Okay. Definitely a comma. He wanted to make sure that had <laughs> emphasis. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, my dearest Christmas, the greatest gift the world has ever dropped before my feet. Ah, he didn't I, even know about the feet. The foot fetish no, thing was going to come it's up a today. Either. No. It's so strange. It's so strange. Okay. Uh, I write you today as I must confess a number of thoughts and feelings and hopes we can fix a fate we have ignored for far too long. <laughs> I don't think it was ignored. Um, <clears throat> the years of us dancing around what our hearts, not only that any, it's, it's a possessive, H-E-R-T apostrophe, yes. Not, <laughs> not only want, but need, in all caps, to flourish and explode with the endless amounts of love and compassion they contain for one another have come to an end. So the years of dancing around have come to an end. That's okay. what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, we must stop kidding ourselves and take the plunge. So that's the first paragraph. Okay, so there's another paragraph. No, there's There's four. Great, great. Three more paragraphs. So, look, right off the top here, just examining this first paragraph. Yes. um, I want to commend him um, for even attempting to write some form of English uh, in this language that we speak in America and uh, how he misspelled your name. (laughs) People do it to me all the time. beyond words. Like on my social media where my name is spelled out. They still misspell my name. Yeah. Well, look, with Christmas Abbott, you Google Christmas Abbott and 80,000 80, pictures of her feet come up. Mm-hmm. You can find the spelling of her name pretty goddamn easily. Because um, there's a lot when you put in Christmas Abbott. Feet comes up. Car crash comes up. Marsh. Mugshots. Mugshots. Marriage. Uh, no. Big no. brother. No, no, no. no. Two people engagements, asking, zero marriages. People are asking if you're married. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess so. So that's popular. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> you could definitely find the spelling of... Her name. Continue, no, we're going to have the show Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, that's, if that happens, uh, I'll watch. I'm with it. Mary, I'm with it. Merry um, Christmas. I'm with it. All right. So here's paragraph two. You see Christmas. We know one another better than most. Uh, and even more, we know exactly what we're both getting into. Two words. N space two. Ah. Period. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think that's actually true, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I have chronic ADD of relationships, ideas, and careers, and despite the fact that you are absolutely quote-unquote hot as fuck where the uh, keywords are capitalized. Oh, is that all caps? Not all caps. Hot and fuck are capitalized. He rightly not did as. not capitalize the word as, okay. which is impressive, actually. Sure, sure, sure. Um, you're absolutely hot as fuck and work out more than most prison inmates sentenced to life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you will... So, let's see. Despite the fact that you are absolutely hot as fuck and work out more than most... Uh, that you will have to battle for my attention, constantly bring my focus back to you, and stop me from eating out of a swamp. So right off on so that So those are my responsibilities? Apparently, that's what he's asking for, yeah. Yes. So I don't want to be the boss at home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, he doesn't know it because we've already started. We talked about this when I was living in Florida. One of um, Was it the first podcast that we did? And I was yeah. like, I don't want a man-child. No. I don't want a fuck boy or a man-child. No. No. And there's, hey, you know what? The good thing about it is, with because we just crossed eight million listeners this month, you don't have to. <laughs> there is plenty of non fuck boys and non man childs out there. We'll, we'll that get would into love that. Like, I have a very antisocial Christmas approach Abbott inside to their home. meeting people. 
Yeah. Okay. I really do. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll you guys are it. getting off subject here. I yeah. know. So the last <laughs> thing you said is basically, I don't want to have any, any responsibilities in this relationship, and I want you to be responsible for making me a better person. And it's not his fault if he strays. Correct. Uh, is that what he says? <clears throat> not uh, not between implicitly. the lines. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, I'm a sensor of red flags. Here's the thing, Jared. I see all them. Uh, again, I would highly recommend you read some TMZ articles <laughs> on well, Christmas when wait, someone strays. Speaking of that. And I I'm, didn't say it. And I know <laughs> that when I anger you, I face either a full-blown stabbing or crossbow bolt to the thigh or arm. There we go. So, I mean, that's a little much. But Is it? Is it? To hit you with a car, maybe that would be something that could nobody was in happen. the car that I accidentally hit Allegedly. five times. Allegedly, five times, yeah, <laughs> three. These are risks we both should be willing to take because the reward on the other end is what truly matters, and nothing can ever compare to it. What's the reward that I have to chase my boyfriend or husband around to not throw his dick in somebody else? Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't write this. Here's the thing. In summation of, okay, of this, this letter here. I triggered for a second. No. I I, I, look, I understand. <laughs> There's Christmas. still two more paragraphs coming. So. Oh, okay, we're not done. Fuck me. Uh, sorry. Let me stretch real quick. Uh, all right, go ahead. All right. Till, hips around. <clears throat> okay. This is a new paragraph. To, uh, to wake up next to your eyes staring and smiling at me. I don't know why you would be watching him sleep. Uh, <laughs> or going through my phone would be an absolute blessing. Hmm. Mm. Jared. Uh, I want to. Have... Oh, I think there's some mommy issues there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I well, can dive I mean, into that. He, he's he's got a great mom though. His mom's hot, yeah. Well, she's but she's a great like he has great parents. Oh, we don't yeah, know yeah. how he turned yeah, out. Yeah, like his this. I mean, his dad's hot <laughs> too, I guess. Like it, I, I've I've stayed at their house. I, they're very pleasant. It's as if Jared has trailer park parents, but he doesn't. He has a great yeah. family. I don't know how he turned out like this. Um, I want to quickly make up a story first thing in the morning that quote unquote Stephanie is just my cousin. That's after you go through his phone. Mm. Um, but most of all, for me to eagerly await that point in our relationship, when you finally cave and decide to go on vacation with me, that will be exhilarating. Um, There's no way he spelled that word right. Exhilarating? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no he's got where a, is the spell he's check got, in He's this. got an A where like an I Like it literally gives you a squiggly line when it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no reason to have any misspelled words in life ever. <laughs> Now, unless like even when I'm typing something and I'm texting, I'm like, I have no idea how to spell this. I just use voice memo. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I say the word and it spells it out spells correctly. It out for you, yeah. So when you finally cave and decide to go on vacation with me, uh, that'll be exhilarating. Again, exhilarating has uh, more eyes than A's for future reference. Sure. Got it. Jared, sure. Uh, last paragraph. Or no, I'm sorry. This is the end of that paragraph. It says it'll be like it's like I will be experiencing Christmas every day. Oh, wait, I will be. Um, so he's mm. he's down with the pun train at least. That was a real bad one. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was a real bad that was one. A terrible one. Um, all right. I was... Last last <laughs> paragraph. Between the two of us, we have plenty of kids. And I think mostly he means him. Yep. Because you've only got the one. Three to one. Jared's up three to one in that yeah. department. Um, <laughs> I'm most likely going to get snipped live on the show, so you'll have proof I actually went through with it, and I'm not attempting to Oprah you, um, which we are going to do. Our buddy Tier is a sergeant major in 19th Special Forces Group, and he's also a medic. And he's performed vasectomies before. Uh -huh. So we're going to try to arrange for a episode live, 500. Yeah, I'm live, really excited about this. Can I come on watch? Show. So I, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. I had this conversation with him last night and I said, hey, can we invite people, like a galley of people to watch, like exes mm -hmm. or people that you've. I thought that was already happening. It, it, it was just determined <laughs> last night. So mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, I don't, I don't care who comes. So, like, yeah, if you want a ticket to that, for sure. Yes. Yeah. I want VIP. <laughs> Oh, you'll get it. Like, Do I want to see the we'll whole... We'll do it at like, his house and the whole thing. Yeah, the whole... Yeah. yeah. I'm oh. in it. Oh, you're in. 100%. 100%. <laughs> to wrap up... Uh, in he, conclusion. He says, so please, let's stop this facade um, and make the happiest boy in a hot dog factory. And let's stare at each other every morning over a kale shake or whatever you healthy people eat and gas station food. Um, you are my every holiday love, JT. Oh, well, boy. that last line was sweet. That was but nice. Where's the sippy, that was nice. Uh, um, oh, man, my brain. Words. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he just hurts your brain. <laughs> you don't have any words other than, oh, God, God damn it. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm going to need a little bit more than that. So. What, what are you at? There's not a question there. 
No, it's more of a statement letter, a mission statement where um, Jared is saying. It's a declaration that. that, Of things that you need to do, which is for him. Yes. That is essentially. Without responsibility. Yes. Yes. He's he's basically asking you to conform to his lifestyle. And this is, by the way, this is the first time we're hearing this out loud. Really? Yes. And we didn't know this was going to happen He just sent it to me 20 minutes ago. Really? Yes. (laughs) So we said, we had talked last night about doing the live uh, V-sec vasectomy on the air for, for 500. And his doctor was with him. Who works at Black Rifle, so he's not going anywhere. Like he's there every single day. No, we've um, known Tier for years. Did doctors quit yeah, yeah. him? What's that? Did doctors quit him or something? They no, should. I think he quit being a, a full time <laughs> doctor, right? Okay, to work it. for Black Rifle. No, he's a, a medic in 19 Special Forces Group. Oh, okay. He's worked with Evan back in the day in that. Great. So, yeah, so I he's really going to be there and, and we can get this VSEC done. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, he's, he mentioned nothing about. So, we're, this is the first time we're hearing it. One, two. Um, it's awful. This is an awful letter to write to a human saying only your needs. Okay, so let me, ex- not, yeah, exactly. What, what, so what, let me what, express like. You'll be getting out of it. It is me, 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 me. Here's my dysfunction. This is how you accommodate me. Me, 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 me. Impulse, impulse, impulse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like if you're going to woo a girl, show up and woo a girl. You know, like so, so how to, how how would someone woo Christmas? We out talked about this. I don't know. I haven't figured it out. Yet. <laughs> well, Club this is in. very wishy washy, well, like Jared. Now, no, 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 no. Definitely, like I mean, I, I like for people to be honest about who they are, consistent. Do what you you know. Do what you say you do. Um, I don't know. There's just a uh, first night dinner. What is it? What's what do you a, mean? What's a what's like a first dating? date? Yeah, what's a first date for you? I'm I'm flexible with whatever. Like dinner and drinks is kind of traditional, but as long as there's good conversation, like there has to be connection there. Okay. Um, yeah, I think a better first date is whatever randomly happens, and you end up banging in a parking lot behind a Wendy's or something. Burger King. Yeah. The restaurant itself is not that important. <laughs> Dan, there's a reason you're not currently married, and I'm going to say that that's probably numero uno on it. Yeah. Uh, right. That's not the first date. Or I just don't give up in life. Yeah. It's people not the, it's not people the first who get date. married earlier. They're quitters. I think if, if we went through people who got married who banged behind a Wendy's, was it a Wendy's you said? Wendy's. I mean, yeah. look, again, the brand is not important. Sure. Let's say any Sub, fast food Sub restaurant. Was that a plug for Wendy's? Are you guys sponsored by I Wendy's? Wish I we wish we were. Yeah. God damn it. Hey. I'm not a bit, I don't like gingers, but other than that, it's yeah, a, it's I'd, be, good, I'd be down. They don't freeze their meat. So. No, they don't. It's the freshest burger you can get. Um, <laughs> I would say this. Most couples who end up together after banging behind a Wendy's aren't together today. So you probably scratched that one off your list. But they had one hell of a ride. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah. If you pull out or not pull out <laughs> behind that Wendy's, say you just jack off on the dumpster just, next to you. Or pull through. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is pulling through? I don't know, but it happens at Wendy's. <laughs> sure does. Sure does. Um, He's like, I got to practice that. Probably, yeah. not a, probably not a good first date. Is working out. Pulling like, through is probably just making the girl come instead of you. Well, we, oh, could, all right. we could do both. I'm dubbing that right now. Yeah, trademark. Yeah, yeah. Christmas habit. Pull through. Yeah. Trademark. TM. <laughs> Pull, Pull through. Pull through for me. That should be the name of your podcast. Pull through with Christmas habit. <laughs> just make her come with and Christmas I just, habit. And I just have my feet showing the whole time. Yep. It's just two. You're, that's your, your logo for your podcast is just your feet. <laughs> Pull through with Christmas habit. <laughs> two feet and just make her come. Oh, man. And enjoy her life. Um <laughs> I, I feel like we, this is such an exceptional <laughs> oh, we've really, podcast. We, we've really along. gone downhill in <laughs> a fucking out donkey basket. <laughs> um, what about working out? Is that one? Or it's like, hey. I would I would like to train together or like have them have an interest in it. But it's not an, like some person was like, oh, Christmas, you can only date an athlete. Dating an athlete is, is super self. And like, I get it. I was an athlete. Like, great. Lots of lots of um fun there. <laughs> Fucking, but you want know, to yeah, talk more yeah. about that? Um, Athletic sex is what she's talking about. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. like if you're just capable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, a lot yeah. of movements, a lot of things. It's, yeah, you can. You do. know, there's there's uh, a lot to tap into. Um, hmm. I don't even know where I was going with with this. Uh, Wouldn't have working out so, with a no, dude. Like yes. I don't have to. I don't have to have an athlete. Like okay. that's not a requirement for me. It's especially with like having my son now. It's a lot of like, what are your core values? Mm-hmm. Um, family, family, like I want you to work, but I also want family time, you know, understanding a spiritual connection, understanding each other's personalities. So like it's educating and empowering yourself with each other, 
Uh, so you have this ability to have like a really flourishing relationship. Um, so just being plugged in, you know, yeah. under knowing who you are, why you function the way you are, not being avoidant about it. And, you know, like, especially with somebody that, with a public lifestyle, people assume that I'm like this super social butterfly, but I'm a hermit. Like I'm, I'm a little antisocial mm-hmm. in a weird way. Like I don't, I don't <clears throat> like new people all the time. I like the consistency of a schedule, the knowing of like, I need a rock. And that's why I like that, that male dominance at home is like that. I have somebody that I can rely on as a rock that will call me on my shit and pull me out of my stuff and not be like this codependent. woe is me person, but right. like literally call me on my shit and just say, Hey, look, get your shit together. Yeah. You know, or, um, just be there for when I'm having a bad day and not be like, well, what is it that you need? I don't know what you need. Tell me what you need. I'm like, just fucking take initiative. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even matter if it's right. We're eating Chinese initiative. tonight, bitch. Yeah. Ice cream and Get Viagra. In the car. Yeah. Call, call on the shots for a little bit. Ice cream and Viagra. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty much all you need. <laughs> um, I don't know. So it's, I'm just, and if I don't get that, then I'm fine with myself. Okay. Like, I'm super happy being single. You know, me and Loyal have an amazing life. So if it's not what I really want and need, um, or am I looking for, then it's not. You're out of there. I, I'm so fast to pull the pull. Um, pull out. Pull out. There it is. Um, when when it's just when I when I when things aren't aligning, uh-huh. and I'm so aware of myself now that it's there's a there's a tiny margin of error there. Like, and I don't mean like you, you can't mess up. Like, I don't mind if you have baggage or issues or anything mm. like that. That's not what this is about. This is about like you knowing your shit, you knowing what you want and us wanting the same things together Yeah, and, and being in it together, like committing so together. What you're saying is that you don't want, uh, I don't want a gas babysitter. station food, 40 year old dude or eating out of the swamp or yeah. Yeah. Re- none, none of that chronic ADD. Listen, I have like a deep appreciation and love for jt <laughs> i do because like he goes for it he goes for it right you're just like man and then in this works for a lot of girls no, and trust me no, i have deep works. daddy issues too it never i'm works. working through them well it works for as long as it needs to work for him by working through them do you mean yeah. bang, banging older dudes because that's how most girls work through their daddy issues no for sure not <laughs> like jesse for example is masturbates to like sam elliott and shit yeah, yeah, my wife does. That's her um, deal. Older dude. No, no, it's not. It's not true. But, it, uh, is, it is. No, it she is, does. She doesn't have is. any father issues. What, what does that entail exactly? Um, going for the emotionally unavailable guy, uh, codependency. Like you know, like my dad. I love him. He's amazing. We have a better relationship now. But he just never was around. So like, there's the abandonment. There's the trust. There's the worthiness. All of those things. Mm. And I think that. You know, like, I think that it's important to know what your issues are so you can work through them. So then you get through a phase in life where you're just like, that shit's behind me. Yeah. And if you don't become aware of them, then you can't work through them, even if you're working through them unconsciously. I just got, like, <laughs> no, that's field fine. on you guys. Yeah. Um, so this is stuff that I've been doing over the last three years of just, like, figuring out why I do what I do. And you do like, therapy these- at all? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I have a <laughs> spiritual guide. I have a therapist. I journal. I go through my routine. I meditate. I work out. I eat well. Um, and I still recognize that, like, a lot of the just acknowledging the issue isn't healing the issue. And I think that that's a big disconnect for people. Like, so JT knows that he's going to try and wander off, mm. but he doesn't take the time to figure out why and then deal with that either childhood untrauma or, um, experience or whatever it may be instead he's just like well this is how i am and that's it i can't accept that i feel like through my life it's my responsibility to grow and live to my full potential and for a while that was a physical full potential (laughs) of of sports and now for me it's a life full potential of recognizing you know knowing who i am exploring it and growing it and then you know doing that for my son because i can't show up for him if i'm half-assed this is all really really judgmental on your part by the way for myself yeah just saying like judging on like me? you you say that he's broken and needs to be fixed because of how he feels about this situation maybe, no i don't maybe, think he's broken and needs to be fixed i think that he just maybe is is accepting like maybe he's accepting that and that that's as is well i mean genetically from an instinct point of view he's right about this stuff 
right? Like monogamy is not natural in most species. Socialization has made it natural, and generally speaking, for us, but it's not. It's at, in nature, it's either out of convenience or social construct, right? Mm-hmm. So he is uh, a primate. That's who he is as a human being. He's a, he's a gorilla, so a monkey. I, could, I yes. would argue that in order for me to accept that argument. Oh, you don't have him, to accept. Well, here's the thing. So let me, let me go ahead and, and get on your side for a minute. We're going to gonna sit on the same side of the table. We're not going to be opposition. We're going to be team, same team. Okay. So if I were to say, yes, that's accurate, and that is what he portrayed there, mm. I would have probably portrayed it differently. And however he decided to do this was his decision, but I would have been like, hey, look, there's, here's a little bit of argument of like what I need and why I need it, mm. but I'm always going to prioritize you as my mm. main like love. Mm. Like we're going to have either a different connection or, hey, all I want are five girls that going to take care of me and adore me. I don't care what you need. But if your needs don't match mine, mm-hmm. I'm not on board with aligning. No, I got that. You should definitely <laughs> not deal with any of this. No. That's, that just, was... that's I mean, th- but there's girls that are happy to do that and they want to do that and that is perfect for them. That's not good for me. Still just the way you said it was real judgy. Was it? Was no. I judgy? No, it wasn't. I think you were saying that Jared doesn't take the time to figure out what's wrong with him basically and try that's to true. fix it. Maybe. But then, how, like, who are we to but say? But maybe I'm wrong. Who, but who here's we? the thing is that I want somebody, what I'm saying is that I want somebody that does take that time. I know what you're saying. Jared's a piece but of I'm shit. But I'm not yeah. saying <laughs> Jared didn't. I'm saying it sounds I'm, like it, I'm but not, I don't know. I'm not defending a guy who wrote a fucking memorandum for record for a girl he has a crush on and <laughs> had me read it live in front of a million people. Christmas is too boss for that shit. Like, but I don't want to be boss. No, I mean, <laughs> but, but in, in, real, in real life, like, yeah, I'm sure when you get behind closed doors it's like hey I, like, that I doesn't mean that you can feed me a whole bunch of bullshit i'm gonna call you on and i'm gonna challenge you that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah but so if she challenges now? you you have to wrap her on the beak because like it's all about establishing the tone you dominance know I mean? yeah well dominance is no. part of the tone just relax i'm talking to you, honey. <laughs> the, the man <laughs> is talking well, we're gonna take your beer. <laughs> mine's out uh, go ahead yeah <laughs> see how that worked yeah i was i don't know where i was going with that uh no but uh, so are you single now it's always a subject. Yes, I have a, I have a. Um, well, the reason I ask is, do we get this question all the time from the audience? Like, you're one of the fan favorites, where it's just like, hey, is Christmas single? Like, what's the fucking? Story? But how would that even work? You know, like I'm, su- like I barely, I see probably two or three people, a day? the same people a week. Yes, yeah, like so those are my friends. That'll those lead are like me the to the next question. People. Do you? How do you date then? Do you do Tinder? How do you? Because like I would figure somebody as, fa- as famous as you, that's got to be tough. Like you just can't show up and be like, oh wait, is that fucking Christmas Abbott? Like, I did yeah, match. of course I'm swiping. Uh, no, I did. Um, <laughs> I did. I did a, a dating app recently for a little bit. And how that work? Um, it was Hinge. Okay. It. I just. Did I don't want to fucking you? pen pal. You yeah, know, like, if, I mean, I'm sorry. If you go back and forth, ask me out. Let's have a face to face and figure it out from there. But like, like, so for me, uh-huh. it's not even the dating process. It's like what I know my end result would be. And I know that I have to go through the process to get to the end result. So bear with me. I want a family. Like I want, I want to be married. I want to have like, I mean, I have a son, so I want them to, you know, really embrace that role. I want a bigger family, so I want to grow. Mm-hmm. And most people aren't aren't there. And if they are there, then I, I just have probably a little bit too much trauma to believe it too soon. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a little gun shy about that situation. Like, you're telling me these things? Cool. Let's see how it works out. And I and I'm to even get to that point is is rare next to nothing. Right? Okay, <laughs> but you were engaged twice, you said. Yeah, but that was before I had a kid, <clears throat> and like we had the same goals. Like we definitely wanted a family, but I, I was engaged twice, and you know the first one, uh, I'm still friends with both of them. Like that's rare. Lots got I have lots of love with them. Um, I mean even even Loyal's father, we have we have a good working relationship now. Um, that's important for me to mm-hmm. have positive working relationships and continue to, to do that. When so, you go down there and you get a rental car, drive over. I don't drive over. I get picked up. Oh. I don't rent a car. 
Is really? it really? <laughs> no, okay. Is that mandatory by the court? <laughs> no, it's not mandatory. So that's <laughs> that's kind of what I was going to ask. Is there any? Like, do you feel it bubbling up? Like, I should drive into this asshole's car right quick. <laughs> no, no. I think that's why you're I'm being also not a, I'm not going to talk about it. You're past it, though, I would imagine, I right? really don't have any animosity towards that sh- mm. situation anymore. And that was through work. That wasn't su- suppression. Like, I, I did a lot. And, like, ultimately, because, like, I made those decisions to participate in that relationship. Mm. I made those decisions to participate and accept and ignore or all the things right yeah my participation was my responsibility mm-hmm. and my like i can't victimize myself in that situation or any situation period so it that like what happened i own it my fault okay i like that yeah yeah take so, responsibility and take responsibility it. i love Ruthless. the fact you don't rent a car though i don't rent a car <laughs> <laughs> for that for that reason no uh just because it's like i have a friend they live close enough to the beach that's cool like i don't want to get a yeah it's like pick me up from the airport bring the car seat yeah <laughs> and plus when they get to the insurance question you're probably like well I'm kidding. I'm kidding. my insurance <laughs> covered it. <laughs> Did it really yeah oh shit i'm gonna get pregnant and start doing all kinds of weird shit why not can dudes get pregnant yeah yeah they, you there's can been carry them in like 2020 so you can't yeah, like you can deliver do you, you want have now a cesarean oof well, yeah. it's not coming out through my dick hole, that's for sure. The pregnant man. I, saw, I mean, he has like two kids. The guy that was on Oprah. That was Chaz Bono's fucking other. Or Chaz Bono got fucking pregnant or some shit, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Ch- look, Chaz was the first one where I was genuinely like, oh, shit, that's a real dude. Mm. And then I was like, oh, f-. somebody was like, that's Chaz Bono. Mm. And I was like, fuck. I was just a bro, <laughs> a homie, you know? <laughs> like, because Caitlin's not fooling anybody. With that, uh, that whole thing. Where yeah, but how much still... difference is there really between a 60-year-old man and a 60-year-old woman? Oh, we all end up looking the same. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're Asian. Old whites, Jesse talks about all the time. Old whites, my wife. Like, you, I would challenge anybody to, if you just put, if you gave them all the same haircut and put 50 Asians, half male, half female, that are 80 years old next to each other, pick out which one's which gender, I would like to see the results of that. With zero plastic surgery. Correct. Yeah. And shave them. I think you shave them too. Well, when my mom went through cancer treatment, through chemo, you know, she went bald and everything. Mm. She, and she was like, she pulled up a picture of my grandpa. She's like, in the end, we all look the same. No, it's crazy, right? <laughs> like, she was really, I mean, she, she looked, there were so many characteristics of her, just facial features that yeah. were so much of his. So what I'm saying is when you reach that age, probably a good time to go bisexual i guess i mean just give yourself more if you're still banging at 80 yeah, still, um, you may as well options. fucking open up the fucking well i mean if you're really uncomfortable with going by before then it could be a good option then because then you don't really see the physical differences but if yeah. you're gonna go by go by earlier and get the benefits yeah that's i true. suppose yeah <laughs> like, you, ever, you ever swung that way i've had a girlfriend no shit yeah how long how long was the relationship um i was uh, two years it's a long time yeah um Shit. <laughs> I, I just perked right up um, on this one. What? How old were you? I was 18. Well, my first one was 18 to 20. Oh, so there was, there was more than one. And then uh, my second, well, yeah, I dated girls for about like five five years. No shit. So you, you would say you were bisexual then, right? I, you know, I didn't like the classification. Like, I just enjoyed them. I guess people. Just the two people. Yeah. So when you're out, like you're not looking for, like at this point in your life, would you entertain having a female partner? You know, probably yes. Wow. It'd be a <laughs> yeah. lot more convenient. It'd be a lot more convenient. A lot yeah. of, and scissoring. What's the convenience? Uh, the two fact moms. That you don't have to deal with dude bullshit, I guess. Yeah. I you mean, don't have to deal with people writing letters. But then you, have to, <laughs> <laughs> then you have to deal with girl bullshit, which I'm not sure is that much better. Yeah. How's the difference on that? You know, they, they all have, they both have their pros and cons. I mean, you know, there's a lot of emotions when it's girl on girl. It's a lot of emotions. But then I've dated very emotional men, too. So um, there's really just, like, not, not a lot difference. Man, that's crazy. But I, also, like, it, it's, been a, it's been a long time since I've dated a, a woman. Two it, years is a, is a long, that's a long that relationship. Was a, yeah, and then I had a year and a half relationship. Um, when I was like 21, yeah. I got to imagine, and I hope this doesn't come off as super crass. <laughs> but since you've you've slept with other women, like there's got to been dudes who know, like serious boyfriends, and you're like, hey, yeah. let's bring another girl into the bedroom. That's different. How so? 
because it's another person. Like when I was in a relationship with that girl, I was in a relationship with that person. Okay. And so, yeah, I'm not really into that, to be honest. Like, I didn't know because I, I like if you're if you're mixing it up, right? And you're just going from so you're just talking the relationships have been strictly on the people, not the physical attraction to the other. I mean, there's been a physical attraction there, but there's also, like, for me, I can think you're super hot and you open your mouth and you're, like, an idiot. I'm, like, ugh, hard no, hard pass. Yeah. Like, I'm very, there's a word for it, but I'm very, like, connected to the personality, the person, the, like, like our our chemistry. What are you doing there with your hands? <laughs> Well, that's because that's two There's, dicks. Yeah. Listen, yeah, yeah, it's a lady so, on lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, I've seen one. that on videos. That's not what <laughs> it's, it looks it's, like. It's, it's, it's lady on lady. It's more gonna, like I was going to awkwardly gonna, put yeah, my yeah, fingers yeah. in my armpits. What, what if I made you a T-shirt and it's two pairs of those scissors you had in high in high school or in grade school and they're just like this and that's the shirt. It's just like what's the point of the shirt? Scissoring. I mean, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very childish. But very it's, childish. It's not like I mean, I'm not the scissor lady. What do you mean you're not the scissor lady? What does that mean? Why why would I be wearing the shirt? Sexually. It's fucking funny. Se- se- he's, he's talking about sexually. Like when no, I get it. You were with the women. I'm on yeah. board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it and did it. Yeah. <laughs> mm. She's been there, Dan. She's been there and done it. It's what she's saying. Take your dumb ideas on down the road. It's what she's saying. I think that would be a good shirt. Um, maybe. Maybe you should write a letter about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just make the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with, the, with these relationships... Like when it ended and then you just switch back to a man, what's the dip? What's the, so the dip? I, probably mostly the penis. I no, actually it was kind of a lifestyle change. Um, so when I went from, when I went to go work overseas in Iraq, mm-hmm. I mean, so one, I was going to a, a place that was, it was January, 2004. I was a civilian contractor, young female. Like I was, I was a unicorn among trolls mm. and sorry. But uh, I, I, so like, I was very self conscious. So, like, I wore clothes. Like, I was just where I was working at a bar before and I'd wear like scandalous mm. stuff and had like hot pink hair. It was like really wild. Went over there and I was like, wow, I need to, I, I just wanted back. to tone it down. So, I, I didn't want that attention. Mm. Um, it, not in that, not in that way. So, um, you know, you just in Iraq, being one of the very only females under 50 working as a civilian contractor and embedded with the military and mm. state department. Like you're, you're hanging out with other contractors, pipe hitters. And so there's like this, <laughs> there's a very different super alpha, super alpha. And yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. You know? So it was just a different experience. And that's when I started dating the military boys. And you seem disappointed about that. Yeah. That always works out. You know, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> she's holding up her hand and didn't work out <laughs> she's holding up her hand with no ring on it for the audio listeners um, but, if, uh, you know like i can tell you you know I, I dated a couple um actually i only dated two guys over there i was there four years came home with one um so like i don't i don't date a lot but i am like a serial monogamous okay like i own that you yeah, know yeah, i yeah. like being in a relationship there's nothing wrong with that I either just don't like dating uh, yeah um yeah i came home and You know, just had to restart. I was really screwed up when I came home. It took me a long time to get my feet on the ground. Because of him or because of what happened overseas? No, just because, like, I I was not prepared. Like, I didn't have boot camp to go overseas. Went overseas, locked down that very regimented lifestyle for four years. I came home, and I just, nobody prepared me for coming home and what to expect. So I did, I had PTSD for a a little while. I worked through it. Um, Had a bit of depression when I came home, just didn't know up from down and didn't have somebody to really understand that. Like me and the guy together who we are still friends too. Um, we were literally in the same boat tumbling around trying to figure it out mm-hmm. together. And, you know, so the decisions that we made at that time were the best decisions that we knew how to make. And, uh, which is a whole nother conversation. So, um, you know, you just kind of shed some of your past yeah and so again it's about the person so moving on to like a girl after that was just hey i just met a cool person um yeah i mean it just i mean the chemistry has to be there you know like there's lots of people that i love like i have a lot of girlfriends that i love and admire and think are beautiful and gorgeous but there's not like a 
a chemistry. chemistry yeah. yeah. So like I'm, I'm definitely big on the chemistry. And, and the reason, by the way, that I'm digging into this, you're the first person I've met who has said that where it's about the person rather than the, the sexual attraction of like, oh, well, hey, I'm just attracted to both men and women. I can just go out and fuck either. Yeah. But what you're saying, it's, it's just solely on that particular person and yeah. how they make you feel. I mean, honestly, that's, that's, that's it's really rare. Physical aspect, like if you like both, you're going to figure out how to get yours either way. Right. And you're going to have a good time, whatever way, whichever one you decide to go with. Mm -hmm. It's like for me and it's always been, but I've had a lot of um, bumps and roadblocks on finding somebody that like I'm compatible in life with. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want. And like the sexual is there, but that can be grown. That can be nourished and like, explored yeah uh but like a personality connection mm -hmm. somebody that gets you without you having to explain and explain and explain and finally you have a fight and then you have to explain a little bit more and then you understand that's not what i that i want so it is it is about the person yeah that's I, again extremely rare to hear that because usually it's it's one thing or the other it's an attraction or uh something <laughs> like that where you're just like fuck i need this tonight whether it's men or women and i mean listen Whatever I need, whoever it is, we'll find a way to to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I mean, that, look, if, if that's not the best endorsement for dating Christmas Abbott, I don't know what is. <laughs> don't know what is. Um, we've been and all it, over the map. Yeah, Dan, you're, it's my failure. Dan you know, is right? taking a back right now. Um, no, I'm no, I'm great. <laughs> I stole his beer. <laughs> <laughs> really lost my momentum after that. Crazy, right? I did not know any of that about you. I don't think anybody did. Nobody ever asked. Yeah, I, well, I do. Fuck. Listen, and, and if I if you ask me something that I don't, I'll be like, nope, <laughs> can't talk about it. Next subject. Sure. But like, why not? Why not? Well, we yeah. haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, yeah, gotten we haven't. Right. I don't think we've asked you anything that you said no to. We, no, we've mm. we've gone down some dark roads, and that's not just uh, prolapse anus, you, you lesbian relationships. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Jared wrote you Some a fucking of the letter to hardest me. years of my life. You guys were like right there front row to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I feel what like, else you got? <laughs> I, feel, I feel like you're like that on social media, which is why it's so fascinating to follow you where it's like, I, you're one of those people. And I said this off air before we got on, you know, today where I was just like, you're one of those people where it's just like, I, I'll wake up every morning. I know at least something crazy and unbelievably honest will come out of your mouth. And you're just really? like, Yeah. Where I don't feel like that about most people. I don't follow a lot of people yeah. for that reason where it's just like, eh. Oh, like I know. People it's are so taking fucking just it's so strategy and polished and like that's why I love and, and I got away from it for a little while because I, I was so far in it that I had to like I was like, if I if I post anything, you guys are gonna be like, Log this bitch up. Yeah. Um which I never went into jail. Okay. God I never damn. Saw We've a moved jail on. Sale. Christmas. I'm just letting you We've know. We've moved yeah. on. <laughs> you were too pregnant to go to jail, right? They were scared I was going to have the baby in the place. <laughs> <laughs> Jailhouse baby. <laughs> that would be a pretty funny fucking story, though. Did you have a baby right in the holding cell, or is just like, whoops? Oh yeah. Like, oh, yeah. If, if I ever have kids, I'm gonna have to tell have to tell them at some point about how I manufactured LSD and got arrested for it twice and did acid fucking 800 times. Like, Just play this episode. Yeah. And that's called my great eight. I, did, I went through every like major thing in my life and I was like, well, here it is. Mm -hmm. um, I swear it's, it's going to be so different. I do want to have another kid. I know I'm going off left field here. I'm taking no, no, over. No. I do want to have another kid for a whole slew of reasons. Um, I think it's good. I, so I have two kids and I think it's good to, I was an only child. And it was fine. Like, I, I had a great life. And you turned out perfect. Yeah. Mm. Pretty goddamn perfect. He turned out exactly how you would expect an only child with a DJ father to turn out. Crick's mix. Um, no, I, <laughs> I, 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 everything was fine. Um, my parents got divorced early, young. I, it was how like old were you? Two years old, I think. Re oh, that's young, so young. So, so you, you definitely don't remember them together at all. But also, you ruined the marriage. You probably. Right? If yeah. it was at two years old, because people have kids to save the marriage. And you just weren't enough. Opposite. So back yeah. in the day. It's pretty people, hard. Well, no, no, no. Uh, oh, it is what opposite. it is. P people were getting married super young back then. When it was yeah. just like 20s. Like you were 20, 22. Like 20, yeah, 22, 22. That's why the. I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. Fuck no. Being at, at the age I am now. And like, but I was lucky, like the people that I talked to 
growing up were like older and I actually listened where they were like, hey man, don't get married to your 30s. Well, our generation like, enjoy is enjoy 20s not as, and do everything else. Our generation is not as bad. I feel like that boomer generation had a... Uh, they were still used to the idea that I have to marry somebody from my town because these are the only people I'm ever going to know. Yeah, you know but I mean? a lot of people from where I, I grew up in Georgia. Then everybody became mobile sometime in the 50s and 60s, yeah. like after World War II, like the national economy started growing. So people started moving to new places and they're like, oh, I can meet other people. I, I feel like that's why the boomer generation had has such a high rate of divorce. Like The boomer generation has a higher rate of divorce than our generation does. Yeah, which is I, kind of fucked up. Well, because but it's, we're also but our not generation, getting married until much no, later, so we're only getting married once. Is the average age when people get married these days? It was twenty. 28? It was twenty before. Oh, I'm definitely behind the curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look. Yeah, I, but twenty eight is so, average. So you okay. still but have I tried a bunch twice. Of, okay, yeah. you still you give it a go. <laughs> you still have a bunch of people that get married super young, but now there are way more people that are married in their thirties. Like if it's twenty eight, then there are more people getting married closer to uh, thirty five than there are twenty. Yeah, basically at this point, still not in that age bracket. But that's no. okay. I'm but cool. what I was I'm cool. trying to say was, <laughs> grow, growing up as a like a, an only child, like I have an outgoing personality. I didn't have a problem with new schools and all that other stuff, right? But yeah. let's say your child currently ends up growing up different, where he's not that outgoing. Maybe he's a little reserved or whatever. Another a sibling, a brother or a sister will help him. With things like that, yeah, um, where it's even just taking care of, like it, with my second child, I see my older son taking care of the mm-hmm. other one, helping him out with things, and it's like that will probably be beneficial for him later in life. You know, yeah, the human um, connection in that way, where there's so many different scenarios, is really fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah and, but I, I will say this: I'm all done with two, and the reason being is with three. You're, you're going to have to. And Dan's texting mm-hmm. like he's checked out. Mm-hmm. Um, with three, it is too much for me and my wife have talked about this. It, it's tough for us to, ha- with what we do and working all the time, to have enough love for more than the two children we have now. Where mm-hmm. it's like, if you feel yourself starting to be stretched thin after two, then consider not having a third because it's, then it's tough. Where it's just like, you'll see on the second one, you'll not do as many things. Not. <laughs> In, on purpose, but just because you're used to having a child, we're like, oh, they're fine. I don't need to pick them up or anything to do that. With third, I, I can't imagine where it would probably just be like, yeah, yeah, where's he at? Well, they With have a chainsaw, two, he's fine. two older siblings to like give them extra love and like one that's probably significantly older, yes. you know? Like, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> there's a, <laughs> listen, it's not about if you can't fuck up your kid, it's just how much yeah, exactly. <laughs> and in that's what a, way you're going to fuck up saying. your yeah. kid. So Je- <laughs> my, my wife and I sat down and we were up. like, yeah, I think we'd be fucking up a, a third kid. If like we big yeah. time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But there's always a chance you fuck them up like Tiger Woods fucked up where they become a billionaire. Oh, listen, I have no, no disillusion about like the fact that my kid, he's going to be brilliant at something, mm-hmm. whatever he chooses to be. And he's either going to, inherit me mm-hmm. <laughs> when i'm too old to take care of myself or he, he like something some kind of arrangement's gonna happen euthanization probably yeah. is what we're looking at yeah no <laughs> no no <laughs> now i'm gonna be like the cool grandma drinking whiskey walking around probably half naked yeah oh yeah that's me yeah, I, yeah. I can't wait to get old because you'll be in shape I hope. Yeah. <laughs> but so even if like, you're not, it'll who be cares? Respectable we'll see. Even like, if you're oh, not, right. it doesn't matter. Have you seen old dudes at the gym? Yeah. As an elderly person after a certain age or yeah. a certain Wait, hair is color it like or that? certain whatever, you can. What? Is it like that with women at the gym? Older women? Do they just walk around with their fucking tits and bush hanging out or what? Because that's what dudes do. Because dudes in a fucking male locker room, older men. Have Don't their, give a they fuck. They have the saggiest they walk nuts ever. Their, and they, but they're always naked too. And you're like, hey, man. There is no need for that right now. I don't know. I think that I'm that person in the locker room. Like, Are you I don't, really? Oh, I don't care. So you're nude all the time and you're just like, yo, this is I who mean, I am? We all have the same goods. S- uh, some goods are, are better it's than others. It's all like the same same, but different, uh, right? I saw an Asian man drying his fucking pubes. No, that's a little strange. In a, under a fucking hand dryer. Was he teasing them? Oh, yeah, and then he's touching it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's like, okay. hey, man. And it was all bush. It was a fucking acorn in a, in a pile of was autumn he leaves. It? Huh? Was he combing no, it? No, he wasn't combing it, but he was. It'd be better if he was combing fluffing it. Was it, it. Was it straight? <laughs> it was bushy. It, it was, was bushy. Yeah, it was bushy. It was that's because he was blow drying it. That's what, that's what I'm saying. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, why are you, first of all, why are you nude in the first place? Second, why are you using the hand dryer to fucking blow off your pubes? Well, I mean, it is right there. It is. 
and I get it. Like, but... I feel like if they didn't want me to use it to dry my pubes, then they wouldn't be at that height. It yeah. just come out at your chest. Yeah. And the other thing I don't get at a gym is... Do you have chest hair? Mm -hmm. Do you blow dry it? No, that's weird. Why the fuck would I do that? Do it's you dry blow dry your towel. beard? Um, I don't blow dry Do you dry groom now. your beard? Uh, I just put, like, leave-in conditioner in. It says do it you groom other things? Yeah, you like shave my, up down there? My hair? Yeah, your pubes. What's happening there? You sh yeah, you shave up. Oh, it's no, I'm, body I'm growing it out, actually. All of it? Yeah, I'm going, like, Viking pubes. Uh, braided it? You're braiding <laughs> like it? sideburns. <laughs> yeah. Like a Jewish Maybe some dude. dreads on there? <laughs> no, I, I groom, yeah, but that'll shave completely. I think it's too much. My skin's too sensitive. I, I, saw, would, I, put, I, would a have, two, I put a two on there. I'd have, yeah, I'm about there. I would have okay. razor burn all the time if I shaved or anything like that because it's, I have sensitive skin. I don't I'm, have, a, so I don't have a lot of hair, but I'll, I'll throw delicate. a two on there twice a year. So that way it's. Twice a year? Yeah. Once every six months. I don't have a lot of hair. For me, it's like once a week because my hair grows fast. Yeah, mine doesn't grow. I don't have any arm hair though or chest hair. I don't have one chest hair or anything. Okay. Um, Interesting. But yeah, what about you? What do yeah. you, you What's go your down pubes? There? I lasered. Oh, nice. the whole thing? So it's oh, like yeah. a turtle shell down there. No shit. Armpits. Everything. They, yeah. Butthole. You don't sweat more down there then? I always wondered when you la laser off your bush, do you sweat more down in your pussy? I don't know. Well, um, I don't know if you would sweat more or less. You would just like well, it just gets like I, more it, swampy. It, yeah. No, it, yeah, it, it because gets, when I sh I shaved, so I went clean like no, that one it gets time. more swampy if you don't maintenance it. If you have long, it gets like for, swampy. It for holds dudes, the heat in. So I, I shaved it off. We we have a sponsor on Ross Patrick Revolution straightrazors dot com. I took a straight razor to it once. Right, all pubes, everything. That was the shortness I could possibly be. It was shiny. It was Ray Cash Care. Um, you know Ray Cash is Ray, Ray Cash Care. Care. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was a Navy SEAL. He was on the show. He pulled out his dick and balls, and he was like, "Hey, man, he was shorn as fuck, right?" So I did that once. Proud of him. But when mm. you're when I'm at the gym and I was sweating, it was just a pocket full of sweat down there because there was nothing to trap it. Well, so you get the proper underwear, right? But when it's not free, right? Shaved, yeah. free, whatever. Like in my experience, it just kind of like held. It wasn't. It wasn't sweat wicking. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it wasn't sweat wicking. It was sweat keeping. So you were just walking <laughs> right. around with beaded up sweat on your bush all the time until Never. you got a laser Not off. really, no. Well, that's what the There was image. very, there, there was like probably two times that I tried to see, I tried to see how that worked out, you know? Because yeah. like, I was told that like, the, the hair was for good padding. So like, padding was for the pushing and that would help the pushing and it. Pushing what? Sex. You're talking about Push fucking. It, the yeah, sexin. No, that's yeah, yeah. dumb. The sexin. That's yeah, it does. dumb. Um, no, I that's didn't like it at all during bone, sexin. That's what the fat around your pelvic bone is for. A little bit of hair is not going to do anything. That's No, I, I get it. It gives like, you an, and it gives it you an extra inch. It didn't work for me. Yeah, but for a dude, it gives you an extra inch where you, you feel like you can go a little deeper. An inch. You have clear it out, yeah. Clear it out. Yeah. Clear it out of that brush area. Yep. Uh, we have controlled brush fires here in North Carolina, which is nice. And I recommend that for anybody at home with pubic hair. Control that brush. Control, the, but not with fire. Control brush fire, yeah. Well, I mean. So, so did you get a tattoo then, since you don't have any hair there? Why would I get a tattoo? A lot of girls get a tattoo down there. When they don't, when they, every girl that is lasered usually gets some form of, of tattoo there. Listen, I'm not speaking for the other girls, but mine is beautiful. <laughs> I'm not doubting it. So, no need to cover. Okay. <laughs> All right. I didn't know if there was a couple cherries or a, a Calvin. No. Like pissing, no. like a, you know, mm -mm. no fear. Nope. <laughs> Didn't know what, where you were on spring break. Or Yosemite Sam <laughs> shooting guns off. Exactly, into the air. yeah. Bang, bang. With a Confederate yeah. flag in the background. <laughs> I've seen a girl with the inside of her thigh. Like, this is through uh, the tattoo parlor that I used mm -hmm. to go to. And it was like one of those um, caution signs, and it was like slippery when wet. No way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. And I remember seeing that, and I was like, <clears throat> mm -mm. Mm -mm. yeah. There's no reason I should see this. No. Not no, no years. tattoos. Okay. Like it's because you have a lot of tattoos. I do, I do. Um, but not, not on my favorite parts. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess it's easy to tell what your favorite parts are once you're naked. You get to see where the tattoos aren't. Yeah. That's where I need to pay attention to those spots. <laughs> to those spots. Yeah. So <laughs> if 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 you are going to date Christmas in the future at home, you'll know her favorite parts because there's not a tattoo on them, <laughs> or your favorite parts. Either way. Or I'm not sure what you're going with F. Yeah, well, your favorite parts. Um, that's that's <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay. Get a little tongue tied there. Uh, that's what happens when you're drinking at noon. Let's get to the drinking bro of the week, shall we? It's been a wild episode. Uh, this was submitted by Kurt Adams. Hey, Kurt, I'm sorry that you're on this episode. If this ends up being bad, we never know until we open it. Sorry, Kurt. Much like Jared's letter, I'd like to nominate my uncle Pete for drinking bro of the week. 
He joined the Marine Corps in 1973 and spent time in Okinawa, Taiwan, Philippines, and Australia. In 1976, they were in a helicopter doing a morning recon run for the afternoon run, and the helicopter hit a tree and crashed. There were 10 men on board, and my uncle and one other were the only survivors. He spent three months in Fort Sam Houston Burn Center and was medically retired in 1977. He lost the skin and muscle tissue on his legs and fought for his disability year after year. As recently as five years ago, a judge made him remove his pants and protective coverings in court to prove that he still needed disability. He worked his whole post-military career in a local power plant and was finally granted full disability a few years ago. On Christmas Eve two years ago, he was diagnosed with lung cancer in both lungs. He lived a really long and tough life and survived more than most could. Sadly, he lost his battle with cancer last week at the age of 65. He left behind a wife and three kids. Thank you for making him drinking bro of the week. Kurt Adams. Man, that's a crazy story. I have chills. Like, Man. Like that, that got I, that was big. Fast. Bigly. Yeah, you got bigly, as Trump would say, fast. Um, mm. Shit. We never know, by the way. <clears throat> and so we always open these up live on air. And you can you can DM us um, all your Drinker Bro of the Week submissions to Drinker Bro's podcast on Facebook. We like to open them live so that way we that? don't know. No, we don't. And I'll tell you why. Some of the stories are happy. Some of them are sad. Some of them are crazy. I We don't want to go into this with a preconception of like, mm-hmm. oh, well... We only read, when read something happy or positive today. Like this is real life, and it should be shared however it was intended. So, yeah. uh, Kurt Adams, thanks, man, for the submission. And anybody else out there, you can send in anything you want. I mean, somebody last week just thanked somebody from for buying them a six pack of like IPA, like super sweet IPA. Yeah, all of it's acceptable. All of it's that's that's crazy, isn't that's it? That's legit. Yeah, man. Well, people. I mean, it's look, we can't. We talk about buttholes for a living. We can't pretend like. Do you keep going back to my prolapse? Not yours specifically, just in general. We talk like about buttholes. You definitely a lot. highlight that one. Do you have a picture of it? Not that I want to share. <laughs> oh, but you do. I it. did so, take a shot. Yeah, I did. One take does a picture, exist. But, yeah. It's not. It's on Wiki feed. You just have to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's on Wiki. There's butt. a picture for. Yeah. A feed, there's a picture for feed at the bottom, but in the top frame you can, can see. Can we just call this one Wiki hole? Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah the Wiki hole. Yeah. Christmas oh. Abbott goes down Trademark. the Wiki hole. <laughs> Mark that for uh, Ibby. That's what we're going to name this episode. Christmas Abbott goes down the wiki hole. Um, and feel free to look at her feet on, on wiki. I feel so feet. inappropriate com. talking about such such vulgar things after such an incredible, heartwarming, That's moving the show. story. Kurt would want no, I, mean, this, I guarantee if you called Kurt Adams, he would Kurt say, Adams, this is how amazing. I want it this way. I'm yeah. sure if you called the guy that passed away, he would probably feel the same. Yeah, like, what, yeah. what was, was his a, name? Um, so Kurt Adams wrote you. Kurt Adams wrote It's his uncle Pete. His Uncle Pete. So I'm assuming it's Pete Adams. We're going to say yeah. Pete Adams. Uncle yeah. Pete. Uncle Pete. Dude's as hard as a coffin nail. Goddamn right. To live that fucking life. Yeah. 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 I'd like, so that was the thing about before my grandfather passed. Um, so he had COPD and emphysema and like he, he just had a real slow ending. Uh, but he was the best man ever. Like he, I love my grandfather so darn much. So he was um, a Korean vet. Mm-hmm. infantry and he never talked about his war experience because like there's pictures of him like in a in a tent like a pitch tent with his buddies and there's snow on the ground like hardcore and he never talked about his military experience until my mother and i came back from iraq and then he would tell us stories especially closer to when mm. he started to pass <laughs> and it was just like so incredible to hear these things and i felt so honored because he didn't talk about it with anybody else yeah. not his two sons like he loved his sons you know that generation, of course, yeah. But I mean, to to hear him willingly talk about it, and I and I would just sit and listen and not interrupt. But to hear these stories, that reminds me of a story of his. Like, you just don't know what they really went through. You don't know what they carried and yeah. uh, experienced. And I'm all about trying to get like these stories out of even my mom and you know my dad and John and their family. Because they're once they're gone, if you haven't recorded them in some way, they're gone. And that's the beauty of this show and podcast in general yeah. for us is like, you know, I fuck, I interviewed my dad one night on here uh, for Father's Day, and I asked him everything about his life. That way, I had it. I had a record of it. It, it will exist forever. If I die, my kids will have a record of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, to get to sit down with people every day, strangers, like, dude, I had no idea about fucking 
ninety percent of these stories today with you. For real, <laughs> because it's not on the internet. Exactly. It's not on social. It's but only through conversation and connection. But unless you do something like this for a living, you never really get to find out about people and, yeah. and ask the questions that maybe no one will ever ask or no one will ever know. They will now, but uh, that's Nobody one of the, the best parts of this job. Exactly. Yeah. Um, which is fucking awesome. <laughs> And that's why you should have your own show. Mm-hmm. So. I have a lot of life to tell. Yeah, pull through. <laughs> You've done a lot of weird shit. As pull through saying. with Christmas sure. Abbott. Just pull. I've liked that? most of the weird shit that I've done. Pull through, right? Pull through. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just call it your orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> or it's about me with Christmas Abbott. <laughs> Listen, I may not be want to be. I may not be want to be boss when I get home, but I want to Domin- pull through. <laughs> yeah, you want to pull through. You want to be dominated. I, also I get want to be it. Served. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And, and a little and light choking, like not enough to go unconscious, but enough for like a two tap. Yeah. Um, no, she's an say unconscious. your experience. She's an unconscious girl. Speak your truth. <laughs> <laughs> for Christmas, have it, Anthony, Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Well, episode. Good night, everyone. <laughs>